time is an interesting factor in life. Sometimes it moves fast, like it's not only June soon, but I'm still getting comfortable with writing 2021. I still remember Sydney Olympics of 2000. Then sometimes it is slow, like when one 17-year-old child is dying of a facial tumour, and rightfully so, she refuses to give in. She scratched off the scab, as cats do, and it looks terrible, but she soldiers on. Right now, sitting in the sunshine through the north window, in her favourite chair. The pain medications have taken effect, and while her back legs were not really up for a short walk, she wanted her dry snack food and the last juices of breakfast. I think time is a fine line when considering euthanasia. I don't think she's ready. She doesn't think she's ready, and fortunately the veterinarian agreed three days ago. But each morning, once the medication's effect has worn off, I look into her right eye, because the left has been closed off by the tumour, and I ask myself again whether time is still available to us. It's been six months since diagnosis, and while the initial prognosis was the tumour will kill her before her kidneys gave in, I now wonder which is winning the race. I've been told by a friend that a death from kidney failure is a peaceful one. I can't say the same for a facial tumour, or more specifically a nasal tumour. The opioid transdermal medication applied to her inner ear flap is prescribed thrice daily. The Nervine sedative powdered capsule has been increased to thrice daily too. And there is the anti-inflammatory liquid I'm now giving her at night. How much is too much medication? When does time state the balance has been tipped between life quality and medicated to stay alive? It's not actually keeping her alive, let's face it. It is overriding the pain until her body gives up or I give in. I look for the cue from her as to when she's had enough. I have not seen that look yet, so I leave it to time to tell.